Hello class, today we will be talking about Linus Pauling. Linus was a chemist, biochemist, chemical engineer, peace activist, and author. He was born in 1901 and died in 1994. He is the only person to win two unshared Nobel Prizes. He won the first Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1955, then went on to win his second Nobel Prize in peace in 1962. He published more than 1,200 papers and books. Pauling was one of the founders in the fields of quantum chemistry and molecular biology. He was also a strong proponent of vitamin C, thinking that it can fight off the common cold and cancer. His most notable work of literature is The Nature of the Chemical Bond, where he outlines a measurement system to determine the tendency of an atom to attract a bonding pair of electrons. Some of his lesser-known achievements are discovering the cause of sickle cell anemia and developing an accurate oxygen meter for submarines. One day in 1951, Linus Pauling was sick at home, and like many of us do, he pondered about the structure of proteins. He drew the amino acids of a random protein in a straight line, which is how they were previously theorized to be and he noticed that the bond angles were not accurate to their Vesper values. He began folding paper into shapes and different angles to try and achieve bond angles that were accurate to Vesper. And after numerous hours of folding, he finally achieved a spiral configuration that satisfied all bond angle specifications. From his model, he concluded that the secondary structure of proteins is helical. This is now known as the alpha helix, as it is one of two protein secondary structures alongside beta-plated sheets. This model inspired future DNA structure theories, including his own theory, the triple helix. In February 1953, Linus Pauling proposed a structure for deoxyribonucleic acid. In his article, Pauling suggested a model for DNA that consisted of three nucleic acid strands wound together in a triple helix. He had confirmed the linkage points between sugars and phosphates. Previous work had shown where the connections to bases were. He knew that the molecule was most likely a helix. However, he still lacked critical data. He had no decent x-ray images, for instance, and he had no firm structural data on the precise sizes and bonding angles of the base sugar phosphate building blocks of DNA. But he went with what he had. After a few pages of theorizing, Pauling was convinced that DNA was in the form of a triple helix. Remember how I said he didn't have access to x-ray imaging? Well, scientists James Watson and Francis Crick did. X-ray crystallography is a measurement where a carefully aligned beam of electrons is directed at a material. By precisely measuring how the beam is reflected, you can identify layers or structures in the material. This technique was used to prove that Linus was in fact incorrect about his triple helix model, and the double helix DNA model was consequently set in stone by Watson and Crick. In Linus' career as a scientist, he made numerous discoveries that changed the world of science. As a result, he built a reputation for being one of the most brilliant-minded individuals on the planet. However, the greatest impact that he made was arguably the triple helix and the fact that he was wrong. He shared his findings with the world and insisted that he had found the structure of DNA. He even went as far as knocking off other scientists who tried to reason with him. His claims of the triple helix initiated the research of future scientists such as Rosalind Franklin, James Watson, and Francis Crick, who eventually cracked the code of DNA when they discovered that it was actually a double helix. Without Linus's proposed theory of the triple helix, the true structure of DNA would have been hidden for many further years. So in the 1950s, it was theorized that the amino acids within proteins synthesized together in a single file line, such as this phone charger. 
So when um, Linus did the experiment on the piece of paper and when he drew out the amino groups of a protein, he realized that the Vesper rules weren't being f followed and they didn't have proper bond angles. So by folding the paper in a spiral formation, he, he realized that this was the structure of proteins and we know this as the alpha helix. So going back to my phone charger example, normally it's, you know, linear and a, and a straight line. But if we wrap it or, or around something, we realize that it's actually a spiral, as you see. And that's how Linus found out that the proteins actually formed in the alpha helix structure. And this later theorized the ideas of the possibility of DNA being formed like a helix.